Why is it that we can obey all the traffic laws, all the government laws, but we can't obey the law of God? Why can't we love each other as we should? Why is all this hatred, you know, and animosity? It's because I think we listen to too many of the wrong things. If you listen to the news, they only tell you what you want to hear. They don't tell you the good things that's going on in the world. They only tell you about the bad things that goes on in the world. Well, you know what? I'm not going to let that bother me anymore. See, I can't help what other people think or do. I can try to help them. I can try to change them. To help them change, but I can't change them. Only God can change them. And that's why we have the gospel. But here's what's happening. Listen to them. Now, there's only one gospel and only one gospel. In Galatians chapter uh, 1, starting with 6, verse 6. See, first thing Paul says is, I'm astonished. What's happening? What's going on, people? That you have so quickly deserted the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion or trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you are, what you have accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Like today, some people were preaching a different gospel. They were teaching that to be saved, Gentile believers had to be circumcised. They were saying faith in Christ was not enough. We here this morning know that this message undermines the truth and the good news of the gospel. We know that salvation is a gift of God and God alone, not from somebody else. Jesus Christ has made this gift available to all people, not just the Jews. We need to be aware of people who say that we need more. Simple, we need more than simple faith in Christ to be saved. When people set up additional requirements for salvation, they deny the power of the cross. Again, Paul in Galatians 3.1. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ has, was clearly portrayed as crucified. See, the Galatian believers had become fascinated by false teachers. They were, it, it was as if they were under a spell. And remember, magic was common in Paul's day. Magicians used both optical illusions and the power of Satan to perform miracles. And people were drawn into it without recognizing how dangerous they were. I don't care what other people say or believe. There's only one way given for us to be forgiven of our sins. And that's the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. No other person, no other method, no other ritual can give us eternal life. Attempting to be open-minded, some people think that all beliefs are passed to God. In a free society, people have the right to their opinions. But that does not guarantee that their ideas are right. Our God does not accept man-made religion as a substitute for faith in God and in Jesus Christ. He has provided just one way and one way only. John 4.16, what does that say? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. Why would Paul have to tell them that there is no other gospel? Why would we have to be told that there is no other gospel? The same reason we have today. Listen to Paul's words, the second, uh, the words in, uh, in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting with verse 16. It says, all scripture, not just some, all, from Genesis to the maps, is God breathed. Through God, through man wrote his Bible. Down what God wanted them to say. That's called inspiration. And it is useful for what? Teaching, rebuking, correcting, and in training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now he goes on to tell Timothy, in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season, no matter when. Be prepared. Correct. Rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For a time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, suit with their own desires, they will gather around them great numbers of teachers who say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside the myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. See, Paul is telling us that the whole Bible is God-inspired. Because God's Word is inspired and trustworthy, we are to apply it to our daily lives. And we apply it by doing what it says, no questions asked. We must be willing to give when others take. Love when others hate. To help when others abuse. By giving up our rights in order to serve others. Paul goes on to say, the Bible is our standard for testing everything else that claims to be true. It's our safeguard false, against false teachings. That's why I pray and I beg people to bring their Bibles to church so that they know where I'm preaching from. If they don't follow along, how do they know I'm preaching from a different book? See, see, it's our safeguard against false teaching. I'll talk about that a little later. It is our only source of how we can be saved. God wants us to show us what is true and to equip us and how to live for Him. How much time do you spend reading your Bible? How much time do you stay studying your Bible? How much time do you spend in prayer? However, don't be like, don't be like a lot of people. We are not to read, we are not to study God's Word to increase our knowledge or prepare us to win arguments. We are to study the Bible so we will know how to do God's work in this dying world. Because our knowledge of God's work is not useful unless we put it to work in our daily lives. Why did Paul tell Timothy it was important to preach the gospel? So that the Christian faith could spread throughout the world. In Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. See, I thank God every day that I believe in Christ because people like Timothy were faithful in their mission by inviting me to church. Now we are the disciples now. We're the 
ones that are supposed to be out there spreading the word. And why is it important for us to spread the gospel message? Did you know that half the total of numbers of people who ever lived are alive today? And most of them do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. He's coming, and he wants to find his faithful ready for him. It may be inconvenient that they can have to stand for Jesus or to tell others about Christ and his love. But preaching the word of God is the most important responsibility the church and its members have been given today. As Paul told Timothy, be prepared, courageous, and sensitive to God-given opportunities to tell the gospel. How many times are we out into the world when we could preach, we could tell somebody something about Jesus and we're completely oblivious to it? Why is it easy to talk about Christ in a Christian uh, Christian gathering or a Bible study or whatever, but outside of that gathering, do we preach Christ? I like this. Paul goes, Paul goes on to tell Timothy, correct, rebuke, and encourage. See, it's, ours, it's easy for us to correct. It's also easy for us to rebuke, but we sure as heck don't like to encourage, do we? We don't like to encourage. I don't know about you, but it's hard to accept correction and be told that we have to change. But no matter how much the truth hurts, we must be willing to listen so that we can fully obey God. Now Paul is getting to the nuts and bolts of what it's telling Timothy and us. He's telling us, speak 